One of the most important attributes of origami is once we have studied and understood the way paper folds and unfolds, we can apply those patterns to things that are very different from paper. I hope by bringing the tools of mathematics into my origami design that I can then fold something that's beautiful and that's unexpected. My name is Robert Lang and I'm a physicist and an origami artist. Origami is the Japanese name for the art of folded paper and most origami is folded from a single sheet of paper with no cuts or tears. I have loved origami my entire life. I've pursued it ever since I was a kid. But my study was science and engineering. I worked for NASA doing research on lasers. But throughout that whole time, I had been pursuing origami, developing designs, and writing books. So in 2001, I quit my job to try to make a career out of origami. I've worked on a couple of different folding patterns that were round and would wrap into a cylindrical geometry to fit into a rocket. And I developed an airbag in a car that inflates from a small folded bundle. So whenever an engineer creates something that opens and closes in a controlled way, they can make use of the folding patterns of origami. Over the years, math has allowed me to realize as an artist shapes and creations that I couldn't achieve any other way. Traditional origami was relatively simple. The designs would have taken maybe 20 or 30 steps at most. But today, origami pieces can be so complicated that they can have tens, hundreds, maybe even a thousand steps. When I'm folding, it's like working with an old friend. It's like dancing with a partner whose moves I know. Uh, if I move this way, I know my partner is going to move that way. And so I explore the math, develop the equations, solve the equations, create the folding pattern, and then I find out what it looks like. And as often as not, it is beautiful. For me, the driving force is that there's always something new to try, a new problem, a new subject, a new shape that I didn't think I was able to create before, but now I think I know how to realize it. And each time I solve a problem, you get this wonderful feeling, and you want more of those feelings. My love of kites started about 20 years ago. I taught math for 35 years. I just combined the two to try to reach all of my students. I figured, why not take this whole math lesson outside? Maybe, just maybe, they would see the relationship. My name is Winfred Randolph Lowe, but in Delray on the beach when I'm flying my kites, they call me Randy the Kite Man. I started flying kites 20 years ago. I bought my first kite and I never looked back. I fly my kites as much as possible. I have about 60 or 70 kites. On any particular given day, you can paint the sky with sea creatures, whales, scuba divers. You're not only looking at the kite, but you're looking at the strings. There's math there and you can do something with it. Kites are geometric figures, kites are triangles. And that is um, one of the things that I tried to take advantage of. Instead of doing it in the classroom or the desk, we take them on the field. Pythagorean theorem is a formula used to determine sides of triangles. If we want to use the Pythagorean theorem on a beach as we're trying to fly a kite, and we let the kite go, and it travels up the line, better known as the hypotenuse. If we draw a line from the top of the kite down to the bottom, that's side A. If we draw another line from that point back to where we let the kite go, that would be side B. So by plugging those numbers into the triangle, we have just figured out how long our string is from where we are standing to the top of the kite. There's your answer.
We can do fractions, common denominators, uncommon denominators. The more complicated the numbers are, the more math there is. I retired six years ago. We get a lot of families that come on Delray Beach and they have kids and I teach math. I tell them, see that right there? We can do a math problem with that, you know? And some kids understand, oh yeah, we did that in school. Nowadays, they see it. But uh, for a lot of the younger kids, uh, get some thinking too. An engineer in our society, they, they don't look like me, but I'm here to break that mold. My name is Deja Mo Williams, and it's kind of hard to explain, but I... Don't worry, Deja. Deja is a manufacturing engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, and she's also a musician. Well said. I literally couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you, Deja. Let's get back to where it all started. Deja's love of science all began when she was growing up in St. Louis. I grew up on the south side of St. Louis, Missouri, in a single parent household with my mom. I got into science because of a program that my mom kicked down doors to get me into. They exposed us to different science topics such as robotics, chemistry, you name it. In college, Deja studied engineering management. While there, she faced more than just challenging schoolwork. A lot of times in class, I was the only female. I was the only black female. Sometimes people didn't want to sit by you. Uh, sometimes people didn't want to help you. You know, I will see a lot of times that um, people will have their, I'm trying not to cry, people will have their little groups that they will study with and I would have to like infiltrate, like how can I bond with that group so that I can get the same resources that my people don't have? But I figured it out. Of course she figured it out, which brings us to NASA. Deja is part of a team building rocket ships. They take an engineer's idea and figure out how to make it a reality, which is pretty freaking cool. Now, remember a minute ago when we mentioned that Deja was also a musician? She wrote a song about science to the tune of Soldier Boy's Crank That. I'm just writing it, I'm like, yo, this is hot. X equals in this O, negative B, less a mode, a square root of B squared minus four AC, for sure I'm not find a root over two. Hey, root over two, hey. Root over to A. A. Deja realized that through music, you can open up a whole new audience's eyes to the world of science, something she wished she had when she was young. But it's not just writing a song and, and that's it. Like, I actually take it a step further and, and am a mentor to a lot of students who either are interested in science or are already in college and just need that extra push to continue and finish. I want to show through my life that you can be an engineer. You can't be a musician. Yo, the sky's the limit. One of the newest additions to the skyline in Hamburg, Germany is a concert hall fit for a modern Mozart. The Elbphilharmonie is considered one of the largest and most acoustically advanced concert venues in the world. Made up of three concert halls, the Elbphilharmonie seats more than 2,800 visitors. The Great Concert Hall, the largest of the three halls, has 10,000 unique acoustic panels that were designed using computer algorithms to create the best possible sound. Each panel contains one million cells that shape the sound by either absorbing the waves or having them reverberate through the space. The curved design of the cells can be seen replicated throughout the entire building. Not to be outdone, the glass exterior of the Elbville Harmony, built atop a former warehouse, is just as spectacular as the interior. The structure rises above the Elbe River and mirrors the water's wave and shine. To mark the opening night, the exterior featured a light show, timed to the music being played within the Great Hall. 
With multiple events almost every day, the Elbe Philharmonie is a must-see for music and math lovers alike. Yo no creo que ser superhéroe prohíba enseñar, al contrario, tener habilidades no es un privilegio, sino una responsabilidad. Hola, soy Moisés Vázquez, tengo 27 años y doy clase en la Facultad de Ciencias, como Spider-Man. Acostumbro a salir desde casa con el disfraz y llegar disfrazado hasta la universidad. Inicialmente en la universidad, cuando llegué con este disfraz, hubo de todo tipo de reacciones. Hubo gente que me decían, estás loco. Pero con el tiempo se pues, han dado cuenta que es una intención honesta. ¿Qué tengo que hacer? Miren. Y es parte de la facultad. Ya me dicen el hombre araña de ciencias. He visto más este, conexión con un alumno a la hora de aclarar dudas con el disfraz. Normalmente yo no muestro mi rostro en entrevistas. Yo creo que realmente no busco la fama, eso es lo importante. No quién lo hace, sino qué se está haciendo. Soy seguidor de los cómics, lo sigo leyendo, lo sigo coleccionando. Decidí disfrazarme como Spider-Man porque un día venía en el transporte público leyendo cómics y en una viñeta estaba Spider-Man frente a un pizarrón dando clase y dije, ese tengo que ser yo. Me encantaría que la gente viera que todos podemos realizar nuestro trabajo siempre con más ganas. En mi caso, disfrazarme me motiva para ser un mejor profesor pero cada quien debe encontrar la manera de hacer su trabajo con mayor felicidad, con mayor vocación.